So hello everybody. Hello. hello. How are you? Good, good. How's everybody? We missed you everybody last weekend. I hope everybody had a great Saturday last weekend. And today is July 3rd. It's a big holiday in the United States, but we have a big holiday with Ivan Bell, and we are very, very pleased to have him. He's gonna talk about Shiatsu Spirit in Southeast Africa. It's a very special project he has, and he has wonderful journey, and he's finding his true calling, his mission in his life. We like to support him, and we like to see the beautiful, beautiful Shiatsu Dojo in Africa to reach more people, to help more people, to discover their own potentiality by learning, giving Shiatsu. Tap into your meridians, tap into your tsubos, and let's give a healing energy to everybody. One Heart and One Planet Project. Join us, let's put our hands together and meditate together. Namu shinyo ichi nyo to 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 ki mi ho to ke o nenji tate matsuru zangi zange ro konmai sho metsu jo bon no metsu jo gon sho on saraba tata gata and let's reflect ourselves what's going on about yin yang energy within our body, within our mind, with our planet. Yeah, can you go to the next slide? This is our yin yang energy. Shiatsu, we discover balance. How to balance our energy, how to find kyo and jitsu to balance. This is our mission. And let's listen to Ivan's mission. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you for inviting me this uh, special day, even if it's just the day before your national US uh, day. How do you say that exactly? Independence Day? Yeah? OK, got it. So it's uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure everybody is just trying to gather the family and preparing the food and so on. So that's why we are not many today. but. Anyway, I'm sure pretty sure people will see the replay after that. So here on that uh, slide, you can see all my details, contact many websites, F -F -F Facebook pages, and so on. So if you need to contact me, please join us in my project or the different things I'm doing. So what is your first question, Kumiko, today? Well, how did you discover shiatsu? I heard you've been practicing martial arts over 30 years. What's the connection between martial arts and shiatsu? Mm. I've started martial arts when I was 13 years old. So it's a long time ago now. And uh, <laughs> I've started with Aikido and Karate. And later I was practicing Jodo and Yaido. So all these Japanese martial arts, and uh, I train from this period to, I don't know, very long time, maybe 25 years long, something like this. 
And I was always, always like, uh, asking for myself to myself if uh, there was a, something like a connection between martial arts and energy, because in Aikido, you have this word, ki. So I was always asking to all my teachers, and especially to Japanese teacher, what is ki about? And they just answer me back, okay, please just take 10 more years of practice and you will see. And every 10 more years, I was asking again and again, and I have the same answer. So at one point I decided there was a, like something is missing in the, in the training. And so I, I think most teachers don't have a clue. And I discovered finally through my journeys in China, what was key. Because uh, I think in the Japanese language, you have a lot of expression or words with key. Uh, but yes, yes. people don't know a lot. Uh, it's not common. Uh, about key energy, as, except the people who are doing some kiko or doing uh, shiatsu, of course. And uh, but in China, they don't have many expression with chi, but they use it very frequently. So in China, I discovered this aspect when I came back in France. I I told to myself, okay, I have to find something who is able to teach me what is this chi thing. And finally, I found uh, during a summer camp in Aikido a training, uh, one teacher was able to, to teach me. And I do remember well that uh, I was really exhausted because it was an intensive training. And finally, I was very asking to myself if I, it's better to have a, a nap in the afternoon or going to the shiatsu classes. And finally, I say, okay, I can have some rest later. So let's see what is this shiatsu about. And from the real beginning, it was, I, I fall in love with, in this technique. And that was more than 20 years ago now. And uh, so I decided to, to study shiatsu in Paris where I was living. And uh, I gathered some Aikido friends of mine. We were something like 10 people. In my, um, in my main room, in my small apartment. And it, we invited a teacher, but she was quite a beginner. So the, the teaching was not that good. Uh, at least I've done one year of Zen Shiatsu with her. And uh, finally, I found another teacher who was uh, a lady from Holland, Netherlands. Netherlands. And uh, she, she was trained in, um, uh, uh, British Columbia in Canada, in fact. And uh, she told me I'm only doing Namikoshi style of Shiatsu. And I said, okay, can I be your student? And she told me, no, no, I'm just a practitioner. I'm not a teacher. And every time when I came back, every session, I always ask again and again and again. And after the six or seven times, she just told me, you're a pain in the ass. So you have, okay, let's start. And I don't know what I'm going to teach you, but at least we are going to start with the Namiko Shikata. So I studied the Namiko Shikata for a whole year. Can you imagine? And when I told that many years later to Honoda Sensei, he, he was laughing out loud. He said, maybe we, we should spend just two or three months on it. It's, <laughs> does, you don't have to do that much. But any, anyway, how I have started this shuttle journey here in Paris, three years with this lady, and then I moved to, to Brussels and I had the opportunity to came uh, to join the Yoseido Shiatsu School with uh, Yuichi Kawada Sensei. And uh, he, he was already an old man, uh, very talented and with a lot of uh, knowledge, but it was very old style, uh, old Japanese style with not much talking, you know, just practicing. And uh, when you ask something, it's just answer you, okay, more practice, more practice. And, and he was speaking in a mix between English, French, and Japanese. And he was writing on the, on the board, the same thing, English, French, and Japanese. So it was a bit complicated to follow. Uh, but finally, I, I did end my three years of study with him, plus one more post postgraduate school, uh, class for a year. And uh, it, was, it's, it was really, really deep 
uh, knowledge with him, deep uh, teaching, you know. Just uh, having a glimpse with Oriental medicine. So after that, I decided to follow more teachers all over the world, in fact, and especially, of course, in France and Belgium. And uh, I've met a lot of, uh, again, Namikoshi Shiatsu teachers like Onoda, who is in Madrid, uh, and some people from uh, Tokyo. I invited some people from Tokyo, and uh, after that, I met a lot of Euro Europeans also. It was really interesting to have a different kind of teachers. So now I've studied maybe four different, yeah, four different style of shiatsu, uh, Namikoshi, Yoseido, uh, Koho shiatsu, and Hohashi. I follow Hohashi since, uh, I don't know, six or seven weekends, something like that. But he was so kind with me, I must say. But since the first training in Paris, I remember it was in Paris, uh, we just met and I, Ask him, can I ask you some question? But after the, the training, he said, yeah, sure, just join me. And we start to exchange and finally kind of friendship started from here with him. And every time we met again, he just, okay, stand aside. I'm going to show you some different tricks or different things. I'd say, oh, wow, fantastic, thank you. <laughs> so that's, I'm, uh, yeah, I summarize a little bit. Can I, I should do something? Yeah, I summarize uh, this. And uh, yeah, of course, it's 20 years of training, so just in a few words. So from martial arts, at one point, I, or I'm still practicing, but more Chinese and Vietnamese thing now. Uh, because uh, after all this uh, Japanese technique, I needed to find something more fluid in, in the way to move and to, to be connected with the Qi. So Qigong, of course and Tai Chi and uh, some kind of Kung Fu. That's what I'm, I'm doing now. But uh, both of it are really, really great. It's, uh, you know, you have a body, you are here and now. <laughs> okay, this is my, my story. <laughs> Sorry? Hala. Yes. So how okay. did you end up, end up in Malawi? Malawi. Yeah. Well, my wife has been promoted there. She's part of uh, the European Commission and uh, she's uh, working in the foreign affairs. So it's uh, first job abroad and uh, the whole family just follow her. And now we are in Malawi. So at the beginning, I must say it was not very easy because after 13 years of living in Paris and 14 in Brussels, it's quite a big change, you know, it's a different way of living. But finally, I, I find something interesting there. It's uh, the connection between uh, me and the, my, my, my clients, patients, that's the first step. And then at one point I met in, a, in the Japanese embassy, it's, it was a party or something, the previous ambassador was living back to Japan and I was invited. And uh, she told me, okay, you have those three guys, are some people like you. I say, well, they are doing shiatsu. No, this Japanese is doing Aikido, this one is doing. And there is a local guy uh, doing karate. So we are supporting the, these people here. I say, wow. So we start to chat. And finally, one year later, it, it took a long time, I, I find again uh, on my way this. A local guy who is a Rastafarian man, very nice and very clever. And uh, we decided to join our forces because he was teaching, he's still teaching karate. And I'm, I'm saying to him, okay, maybe we can put some shiatsu in your teaching. He said, yeah, why not? And that's the beginning of uh, our friendship. And now he's one of my students since a, a year now. He's a brand new student. <laughs> So that's for how we, we ended in Malawi. And what did you do there since then? Well, uh, like every Shiatsu practitioner, I'm, I'm treating my patients, you know. <laughs> of yeah, course, there, I... is, there is not much people because it's mostly it's expats people. But I've got a few locals also who are recommended by here, this one or this, this one. And, uh, yeah, it's really interesting to touch different bodies 
and I can now I can say uh, there is a lot of difference differences uh, between Asian and uh, Western people and African people. It's uh, different bodies, different reactions too. It's really and, interesting. And different problems to solve with Shatsu. Yes. Than Western one. You can say that, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly in Europe, I, I was uh, dealing a lot with mental or, or psychological issues. And of course, some stress disorder or burnout or uh, uh, how do you say, when you dep get depressed, uh, depression? Depression. Depression, so many different things. And it was a, a huge work because as you know, we have a lot of different, uh, different uh, disease or issues or troubles, whatever. Uh, in Malawi, it's quite simple compared to Europe. People have some, mostly have back pain because they are working very uh, low with their, their shovels or they're, they're digging the, the, the ground when they are peasants. So even in the, in, the, in the cities, you know, just to, comment tu dirais, Aurélie, pour balayer? Broom? Sweep? When they are sweeping? Okay, they have very short broom. So, they're, they're bending like this all day long. And so it's not good for the back, of course. So I'm doing a lot of backs. And the second main thing is uh, stomach issues and digestive problems. Mostly because they have just only, and they like only one kind of food. It's what we call here, uh, the Spanish called polenta. So it's, um, it's uh, mice flour, yeah? It's my floor, and you put some water, and maybe you can just put a, f a few fishes or tomatoes in it, and that's it. And that they eat that every day of the year, in the morning, for lunch, and for dinner. Wow. <laughs> yes. So just imagine the consequences. It's the thing. It's a, it's just a single food, and you don't have all the nutri nutrients like uh, vitamins or minerals. You just have this thing. So they are eating always the same thing. So the body, of course, at one point say, stop it, stop it. And you got inflammations and you got heat. Heat in the stomach is one of the major treatments I'm doing. So it's really interesting. And you know, when I was in Senegal, it was quite different from the food point of view, but they were eating every day in the morning because also they are poor people and in the morning they take a, one of the, this french baguette every morning one per person they cut it in two inside they put what uh, some um, how do you call that uh, mayonnaise okay you ready so you have bread mayonnaise then you you use what kind of cube you put in the soup what what uh, is the name broth yeah, broth. broth. Okay, so uh, they bullion. melt it. It's a bouillon. Bouillon. The bouillon, bouillon. exactly. Oh, okay. The bouillon, they put it on the mayonnaise, and then sometimes they add some coffee powder on it. No way. <laughs> yeah, and we eat that every morning, uh, the whole baguette like this. So it's a big sandwich, but it's not a good one, because you have only grease and uh, this this industrial bouillon, bouillon and uh, this uh, coffee powder, so it's not good at all. And finally, they, they always end with heart problems. Mm -hmm. So too much, too high pressure, of course, blood pressure. And uh, so you see the, the impact of the food in, in the health here in Africa is obvious. It's uh, because we have the chance of having a lot of different uh, aliments and fruits and vegetables and uh, different kind of stuff. So finally, we are not that bad. <laughs> Our health is, is quite okay. When you go in both, you go in both country, you, you need to know how the people are feeding themselves. It's really important because you do understand why they are suffering these kind of troubles. So I'm doing that. And, and now would you like to go to the, the slides to, to yeah, talk please, about the sure. treatments? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me do 
Okay, here you have a, a picture on, on, on your left side. It's me in Senegal. It was two years ago. <laughs> so I was quite happy, as you can see, because it was two kids on, on both sides. Uh, we have the kids from a lady I've cured from the very first day from a huge migraine. So I had to take picture with the whole family every day when I was coming to the, the clinic. So he, uh, we started this uh, MSH story, MSH platform and uh, organization here in Senegal with my friends and my students. And uh, it was quite, uh, we, in fact, we didn't think about it. We just go there. We had some contacts in, in a host, small hospital plus different, um, how do you dispenser? dispensaries? Dispensaries in the bush and uh, a school too for nurses. And um, we just went there and finally it was great because after the second day we started to work and many, many people came to us. So in the evening between uh, two beers, we just decided to do a logo. So that's uh, the hand you see uh, on the right part of the slide. And uh, finally, after when we came back in France, in, in Belgium also, we decided to do something with this and to repeat the experience. Unfortunately, the COVID came, so we are still waiting to have the possibility to go back there. But I hope next week, uh, next year, uh, we will be able to go there in April. And so it all started, yes, you have my team here my students, and one of these people, the, the man in the middle with a big bird here, is an acupuncturist living in Senegal for more than 30 years. It's a Spanish guy we met there. It's a very, so he, was, he had a lot of experience of those people and how to, to treat them. So he helped us also to settle there. So we were starting here from that point, and finally, we decided to create this MSH uh, platform that you know now, it's, you can find it easily on the, on, on the internet. Uh, so the, the project in Senegal is to teach and treat, and to teach in, in the school for nurses and, uh, and different kind of people in, in the health uh, sector. But in Malawi, it's a bit different. If you can go to the next slide, please, Gay. So yes, in Malawi, it's the relationship I have with this karate teacher. And uh, he already, already in, his, in his own garden, he was digging the foundation of a future dojo. So I say, well, maybe we can join our forces and help you to, to have some money so we can build the walls and the roof and now having a floor and things like that. But we started directly in the garden on the floor. So we just have this plastic sheet you can see here, white and blue. And we started to shiatsu like this. And I'm quite happy because you see those people doing this shiatsu, they, they have only maybe 20 minutes of training and they are already in good position. So <laughs> it's not bad, it's not bad. Okay, so here the project is to build a dojo. Dojo is meaning uh, having this building, we need of course some money. It's not much in fact, for those people it's a lot of money. It's, we're talking about millions and millions. Uh, but in fact, it's like something like 3,000 euros or dollars. So it's not that much for us because of uh, uh, the change, the rate. So we are starting here uh, and they decided to have a regular classes starting in September. I will give the classes for free. And uh, my first project is to start to spread shiatsu through those people. What is interesting in, um, in vo uh, those uh, young boys you can see here, they, they got between 18 and 25 years old, in fact. And it's, they are all junkies, in fact. Uh, addicted to drugs, alcohol. Uh, they are often victims of uh, sexual harassment or uh, violence, or, uh, serious violence. Some of them are sleeping outside and uh, 
the thing is my this friend of mine uh, told me if we come to karate karate is for free so you can do the same shiatsu will be for free and in, in the exchange they promise not to touch alcohol or drugs anymore and we control that looking at uh, breathing the breath we, we just smell the breath and uh, and we see the eyes if we don't take some drugs in the eyes and we have some basic tools like this but we can you can detect uh, if someone is uh, cheating or not and uh, finally they, they started with this there was something that day 16 person but in fact the whole school is 50 different students so it's it's quite a lot of uh, boys and girls girls not much just two or three but a lot of boys yeah so my my goal now is with this dojo to be able to have classes all year long because as you know in tropics under the tropics there is six month rain and so we can't do these classes outside during the, the six month rain so that's that's why we are trying to do okay i'm sorry my english is not that fluent i'm doing my best i hope everybody is able to catch me yes your english is great oh, okay thank you it's uh, it's not true either thank you <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, the project and later uh, through the web platform we are promoting all the people around the world who are using shiatsu to do this this mission all around, as you, my good uh, teacher in Paris, uh, Bernard Bouhere, is um, doing already in India and uh, also in uh, Benin, Africa, and in Peru. So I know a lot of person. And the next article you will see soon is someone uh, with, who had uh, traveled to, let me think, to Mongolia with Shiatsu. And he told me, because I'm French, I don't know a single word of Mongolian language. But finally, Shiatsu was our common language. So it's great. <laughs> I, I love this kind of story. So I'm sharing it through this blog of, on MSH. And uh, the second thing, I'm going to help more and more people who want to do the same. Not on my name or on MSH name, just help them to create new missions all around the, the world, especially in the southern continents, where we need that. There is also a project in Puerto Rico, I saw, and Vietnam. Yes, it's, uh, well, Puerto Rico was an exception. Uh, it's, it was, a uh, how do you say, um, when the earth is shaking, uh, earthquake, earthquake, an earthquake there, but destroys uh, some part of Puerto Rico. So all the therapists, uh, went there to help the people to get rid of the stress of this, this situation. So it was a kind of emergency, emergency situation for Shiatsu, yes. So the um, hurricane. You, a hurricane and a, an, an earthquake. 6 oh, there was an earthquake too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the magnitude was quite huge. And, um, but the, 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 the other new name, Yes, we have in uh, experience in Congo already. I've shared something from Vietnam. Uh, we have many stories already, and I'm waiting for more stories. So please, uh, if you do hear me and uh, watch me now, in, even in the replay, contact me to share your stories and to put that on, on the web platform so we can promote also your missions and uh, your, your personality. One day you will see some uh, one amazing italian guy also that did a lot but he, de he, he decided not to go far away just in italy so that's one aspect i want to mention is um, of course it's always kind of exotic to travel away and uh, in, in those southern continents you can say yes i'm i'm a good man or good lady because i'm traveling and helping with shiatsu okay but maybe you can also do the same very close to your house or to your clinic. And uh, there is a lot of poor people or depressed people. Um, you know, there is a lot of organization to uh, helping. So you can come and say, okay, I can, maybe I can do something with my hands and uh, sharing this shiatsu is so good for everybody at any age, 
at any in any situation. So I, I must please do do this, do do ring the door at the doors and say, okay, how can I help you? It's uh, important. Uh, we we have a mission as practitioner. We have missions. Everybody does. Uh, is um, of course we need some money to live, and of course we need to pay the rent of our clinics and so on. But we also can we can also do more, like saying I'm I'm taking three hours, four hours in a week, helping people, and that's a huge difference in your practice because your heart is going to explode with this kind of experience. So you're going to be better and better as an, uh, a practitioner in Shiatsu. So of course, this dimension is very, very important, sure. Yeah, and you said that Shiatsu serves uh, different purposes, that there are ref refugee camps and it brings peace. Um, the, the experience of Shiatsu in Peru uh, is really interesting. They are putting together people from the former communist rebellion with uh, the local people, the peasants. And the peasants suffered a lot from this uh, war. Uh, it, it was a civil war. So now this organization uh, from Paris, they are putting these people together and uh, teaching the basics of Shetsuans. After that, they say, we are just here to teach you. Now you have to practice together. So imagine the power of Shiatsu between former enemies to touch each other. That, that's this idea. I want to promote it also in the refugee camp in, in Malawi. We have a huge refugee camp with 40,000 people in it coming from all the Central Africa zone uh, area. And uh, those people were former enemies and they are living all together in the same camp. So it's, it's a complicated situation also. So I'm, I'm, my, my goal also is going there in September. And uh, I'm pretty sure I can do that because I already have a lot of contacts inside the camp. So it's okay. And I hope at one point, most people will, will be able to do Shiatsu together. And so to release you know, the pressure and, and, and the hatred also between them. It will be really interesting. So when I will settle this, um, I will be able to invite people from every part of the world saying we have a dojo. Now you can come to regular classes to teach whatever you want to teach and go to this refugee camp to bring Shiatsu and peace in the same movement. That's what I'm, I want to do now, my next project. <laughs> So what is the time frame of M Malawi project? I saw so, that you already uh, uh, raised like half of the amount that you need for a dojo. Yeah, already I have more than a third of uh, the total amount. So it's, it's good. You know, it's been only two weeks now. It's uh, online, so it's perfect. I'm pretty sure at the end of summer, we will have enough money to do uh, all this. And um, I, I'm pretty sure that in September, I will uh, give money to my friend and uh, we can start to work on, on the buildings. And you know, in Africa, it can go very fast because everything is easy. You have a lot of workers doing nothing also. And so if you say, okay, can you do this? I say, yes, sure. And uh, it can go, I think in a month, we can create the dojo just in a month. It's a, it's a big one, you know, it's a 250, 250 square meters. So it's not bad. So, yes, you, now you can translate in your own currency and how many money do you need to do the same in your country? <laughs> you can add to zero, I think. Yeah, and how much are you, uh, do you need to build it? I need, I need 3,000 3, euros, so maybe 3,500 dollars, something like that. <laughs> and I will, I will be comfortable to do, to, to, to do this work, yeah, sure. Uh, I've got a question in, in the chat, I see. It's a good question. Well, why there is so, uh, where, where is the question? Who is asking this? Veronique. 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 One question. 
is about women. Uh, why there's so few women busy looking after the family and cooking as, as usual? Or uh, how about women's needs for chefs there? Hmm, a lot of questions. Okay, a few women because it's a very classical society and the men got all the powers and the women are uh, at home. Uh, but not only at home, they are mainly doing everything. They are taking care of the kids, working in the fields, and also they are every day uh, working in the countryside to look for some wood. And in the evening, they're coming, coming back with some huge uh, piece of wood on the head, something like 50 or 60 kilos, imagine, on your head. So you need uh, to have a strong neck. Huh? And uh, those ladies, they do a lot and they have no, many no, no rights, no, nothing. And when some, uh, someone is doing, like in karate, doing karate or martial arts or whatever it is, it's always men who are coming because they have more time. They, they do less, in fact. And uh, also their needs in Shetsu, if I had a few women, uh, ladies from uh, yeah from Malawi, of course, and uh, their needs is mostly to be helped with um, uh, sexual harassment, and uh, it's a huge issue here in Malawi. Well, the girls are getting pregnant starting from 12 years old, so and they are raped mostly at uh, at eight years old. So it's a terrible situation for women in that country. It's really bad. It's really bad. The men are obsessed with sex. And uh, it comes from their own history. There is some explanation for that, but I'm not going to give it now. But unfortunately, women are really suffering a lot. Too much work, too much children, uh, very poor health uh, institution. As to uh, just one example, to give birth. We, we, around uh, the capital, the Lilongwe is the name of capital, we have to go to a special clinic to give birth, okay, like everywhere. So, but the situation is different because there is one million people in the capital and there is only one clinic for that with just one room. One room to give one birth. Room? Yes, one room. So it's, it's just completely so ethic. Only for privilege. Oh. Well, if you have money, you have privilege. Yes, if you have money, of course, you have private clinics, but it's very, very expensive for the people. So the, the, the only public hospital is a nightmare. Most of the people are sleeping outside and there is not no enough rooms for everybody, not, not enough everything, not enough doctors, not enough medication. Uh, so you just imagine this is one of the poorest country in the world. In fact, it's the third poorest country in the world. So it's a really complicated situation. So those women, when, when they, they need, it's not that they want, but when they need to give, give birth, they go to this hospital and there is one, just one single room and one single bed. And the doctors say to the others who are waiting in the corridor, please hold on. Mm. it's not normal you see it's not possible also so you have a lot of complication and problems and so their their life are really complicated so when i have a woman i can treat her with a lot of uh empathy mostly and treating of course health health meridian and uh, uh pericardium meridians and things like this because they need really <laughs> they really need help and sometimes you need also to treat different things like bladder, liver, and uh, the kidneys, of course. Uh, it's really a complete, a complete different situation from what you, you are used to. And that's what it's interesting in giving these shiatsu classes or coming in those countries, because you learn a lot. And of course, it, it, it's going to break your heart, of course. Yeah, it's impossible to escape this. And, but thanks to this experience, you will be a different person. 
So that's why I'm promoting these missions abroad. <laughs> so once the dojo will be ready, uh, will you be recruiting volunteers? How does the vision? Yes, you, you maybe not for the fir very first mission. I think I will invite some very good friends and good teachers with a lot of experience. And I will see how it goes. If it's okay, the second one, I will start to invite everybody to come like uh, young practitioners. And, but at the real beginning, I want some strong people who already um, have a lot, uh, at least 20 years of experience because you know it's, it's very hard sometimes. It's, it's tough, yes, sure it's tough. But it's also so, so good for your mind, for your heart, for, for, for having a purpose on life, in, in your life. Uh, mainly I've seen, uh, like last weekend, I've seen many practitioners in my last training and they, was, uh, they were asking me, how is it, can I come? Is it possible to come? Will you, will you accept me if I'm a volunteer? I say, no, no, I'm so sorry, but, but you're too young. You, you need more experience. You have to deal with death before that. And from time to time, as you know, we have some patients who are dying. Unfortunately, if it's a can could be anything like bad disease or cancer or whatever. So I I need some people who have been through this situation first to be sure they are not going to cry in their bed for the whole journey. <laughs> Yeah, so on the, on the website, there's a list of requirements and how to prepare for the volunteering work. Yes, I put a, uh, just some basic things, especially just yes, to, to be prepared to go on those things. But, you know, every association behind these missions have different rules. So you need to be in touch with them, contact them and say, OK, Am I strong enough? Am I uh, experienced enough? Uh, what can I do with you? Is it possible to come? And often, you know, it's only two, three people going there. So they are doing that in their own school. So it's difficult to enter this, uh, these different missions. So my, my point is to try to open more and more to have the, for, for every practitioner to have a chance to do this kind of experience. Uh, easy. <laughs> I don't know much about uh, humanitarian missions. I read that uh, uh, you have to pay for the flight yourself. What about accommodation? Uh, accommodation, I'm always asking for, to, to the local people to, to give uh, accommodation, even just a bedroom, at least a bedroom. And for the food, usually, you know, the food is so cheap. If you have, uh, you're staying uh, one day, you need maybe one or two dollars to eat. It's enough for one day. So it's very cheap. Of course, if you go to high restaurants, everywhere you can find this good food and good restaurants. Of course, it's more expensive, but uh, yeah, usually no. if, you, if you go to a market, you can have so good fruits, you know, so tasty. It's, uh, just you should enjoy that <laughs> it's once in, a, in your life. So, yeah. Nice. And you have uh, any suggestions about what would be the minimal time of, of someone coming like for one month or five months? No, one month is it's long, you know, when you're not used to this, it's a very long. Yeah, between a, a week and two is enough. At the beginning and uh, when you get used to this you can stay longer but uh, just think also that it's quite demanding because people are coming for free usually so there is a lot of people coming you can't treat them all it's impossible uh, even with my team I, as you see on the on the slide we were a few of us and we were not able to treat all the people coming in the day so you have to think about this and uh, after just half a day, you start to feel exhausted because those people got a very bad situation for food or health uh, or hygiene, uh, whatever it is, you, well, at one point it's too much. You need to rest also and to, uh, to recover your strength in the afternoon or in the evening. 
So if you say, okay, I'm going to work eight hours a day, don't worry, don't worry about that. You will have people for eight hours a day. So maybe you should see little and start little with just uh, four or five hours a day. It's already good because it's different energy in those countries too. You're not used to the heat or humidity or the, the dust in, in, in the air. So all these things, you have to think about it and to, to be ready. And that's why I like to go on those missions with people who have already the chance to travel a lot especially backpackers, because those guys or ladies are strong and they, 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 they don't care about the, you know, the bedroom, if the, if the bed is not that clean. Okay, that's part of the job. <laughs> you have to accept different situations. You're not going to, 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 to live in a, a nice hotel or whatever. It's, it's different. It's really different. It's not holidays also, okay? So you have to think about this. If you think you're going to... Africa or South America uh, for holidays with Shiatsu, well, it's not true. It's not going to happen. It's going to be hard. But also because the people are so happy to see you and because you're sharing those things from your heart, so you're always invited in the evening for drinks or for food or for party or for listening some music. So it's great, but it takes from... It takes a lot of energy to be available in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening, you know? <laughs> so you need to rest also. So it's all these little details I'm giving as advices from my experience. And what about women? Uh, do you invite women to come volunteer? or? Sure, sure, them? sure. Of course. And it's good because uh, those, those countries, they, don't, uh, they are not used to, to see women coming and be treated by women it's uh, maybe can help them to to make a, a shift in, in their mind and say oh maybe we can do uh, that also with women so yeah sure it's good it's good of course you you should not be uh, um, let's say under medication uh, it's not just for women i mean for everybody just imagine someone who's got uh, diabetes diabetes in english yes Diabetes. Diabetes? Yeah. Okay. And uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, if you have this kind of situation, it's not recommended to go in both countries. Just imagine if you are, you lack one of your medicine. Well, you're in the middle of nowhere. So it's not a good idea. <laughs> uh, There's a question from Natasha. Do you get uh, subventions to work for free? Uh, yeah. Do you receive money to donate to do this? No, I don't. It's just donation. Uh, we got uh, more and more uh, sponsors, but it's uh, from the Shiatsu world. It's uh, mostly uh, schools and uh, federations or union or societies. But uh, I'm not asking them to, to give me some money. I just want uh, that it comes from the heart of every kind of uh, people. So it's mostly a uh, private donation. Uh, yeah, and uh, in exchange, those uh, sponsors, they are sharing my post and sharing my message. So it's, it's great, it's really good. But what I want is, uh, yes, to work like this. I don't ask any money for, uh, for us, for um, anything. It's just directly from, from you, people to uh, the, the missions, to the people who need that. So as you've seen, maybe on my web platform, there is two different uh, crowdfunding now, one for Malawi, of course, and the second one is for Benin. It's a, it's a huge one. I'm not sure they are going to succeed in having a, the, the whole money, but at least they can do something there. And they are uh, going there since the, the last five or six years. So it's already good. I have a lot of knowledge of the situation. We know the people there. So yes, now we have to buy land and build a school. So it's a bit different. I don't have to buy any land in, in Malawi. It's already done. So it's uh, easier for me. Yeah, I, and I hope we will be able to do some more crowdfunding. And you know, I don't need people to give a lot of money, just 10 bucks, uh, 10, maybe... 
20, uh, that's enough. If everybody just do that, it's great. It's enough. And we see with little by little, you know, it's uh, just the beginning of this uh, NGO. Right. Ivan, there's a question from Veronique. She's asking about addiction. Okay. Oh, yes. uh, the, what about it is Ver Ver Veronique, is, maybe you can ask me directly. Yes, please, Veronique. Uh, yes, hello. I'm sorry. I'm in. I'm outside, and it's difficult to hear and be heard. But uh, I, I maybe I missed the start. I wanted to know how you you managed to to convince them with Shetsu because having uh, done a little bit of uh, volunteering help with uh, addicted people uh, in Europe, um, it's quite. Uh, it's quite challenging and difficult. And I, I just wanted to know a bit more about the context. Um, like, is it something you, you, you arrive and you, you demonstrate and you, well, how is it um, put to them and how do they, um, how do they get the idea that it's going to impact on their health and that it's, it's uh, possible and it's uh, the first, the right thing to do now, now and here, if you see what I mean. Yes, yeah, sure, I see. And, uh, you know, it's for me, it's not that difficult because the, the deal is already uh, um, here and uh, the karate teacher I was talking about is uh, already doing that, this for many years now. So uh, the, I don't have to, to struggle with this situation a lot. And most of the kids who are in the school now, in the karate school, uh, where I'm going to give this uh, shiatsu classes, they already made this, this change uh, many years before. Uh, so I'm not struggling a lot with addiction. Uh, of course, newcomers, uh, which show these difficulties and I will have to deal with them. Uh, but just imagine if in your life you have nothing and someone is telling you, I'm going to give you some solutions for free. What are you going to, to choose? And when I mean nothing, it's really literally nothing. It's nothing. There is no other world. You don't have job. You don't have a future. You don't have experience. You don't. You don't go to school. You have nothing, and even you, sometimes you don't have your own parents. And so those those young adults or, or teenagers, when they are coming, and you say, "Okay, are you? Do you need to to learn how to protect yourself with karate?" They say, "Yes. Okay, this is the deal. You stop drugs. You stop alcohol, and then you we are going to teach you. And uh, now we are going to teach you shiatsu. So it's a kind of medicine, natural medicine, because you can't afford to go to the, to the drugstore to buy some medications. So, and they say, yes, of course. So they, they are really, really keen in learning things. But I could come also with uh, different uh, stuff and they will be keen also to learn because they have nothing, no future. The only future is to, 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 to be in the streets or, or to rob or to, to live uh, with their family and maybe there are 10 people in 10 square meters and uh, it's, it's completely a different situation. So it's not like in Europe, it's not like in the USA. Does, does that answer Veronique? Hello, hello. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you very much. My pleasure. So there are two projects, one in Malawi that is uh, first on the, in a row and Malawi is a small country in Eastern South Africa. And the mm -hmm. second one is Benin, which is a small, another small country, but in, in the, West, the West Coast. West oh, yeah, Coast. Sure. So how can we get involved? How can we support you? So you, you can go on, on, on the web platform named msh.org 
uh, exactly i've got uh, we 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 are going to share anyway but it's uh, msh-yatsu.org and if you go there you you can the website is in english so it's quite easy and if you look in, in the uh, the articles in in the blog uh, you can see this uh, two crowdfundings now going on and you can just click on it and uh, easily, if you have a visa card or whatever, you can uh, transfer some money to us. So it will help uh, some people there. And what you can do also is uh, uh, maybe to contact me or, or my colleagues to say, okay, we are going to, to do this kind of mission. Can you help us to, to, to do it properly? And uh, how can we do it? This is a good question because it's not about the, just uh, the materialistic aspects. You know, it's also uh, with uh, the, the ethics. Ethics is really important. You can't go just to, to a country like this, and say, hey, here I am. Uh, I want to do Shetsu, please lay down. So it's not working like this. You need some, some knowledge about the culture, as I said, the food, and uh, many different things, and especially to have a, a good behavior. Uh, if you uh, drink a lot of alcohol in the evening, well, it's not going to show a good aspect of uh, Shetsu practitioner, but also just think people in those countries, they don't like this kind of uh, uh, habits, and uh, especially in the Muslim country. So yes, we have to think about all these different aspects. Yeah, sure. So please just, you see on the slide now, you can just uh, join us. You have a link for Malawi, but you can go on the website to see the other crowdfunding too. And uh, I'm sorry, I used uh, this uh, Litchi website, is a French website. Uh, I didn't think uh, two seconds, but uh, some people from the UK or US or Canada also wanted to participate. <laughs> so next time I will take something more international. And uh, if you just can send us $20 or 20 euros, it's a huge difference. When you know that the monthly salary is uh, $2. Okay, so now you can imagine it's 10 months of work. So it's a real, really a, a lot of money for them. And we can do a lot with this kind of money. So. If you hear my message, thank you. <laughs> yes, hopefully. Um, I'm sure uh, many people will support you because we are so inspired by your work and we are so connected. We all, Shiatsu practitioners, are together and supporting each other. And your mission, your missions in Africa are so, so, so inspiring because they're empowering that, especially in those difficult times, that it is how important Shiatsu is and how much it can bring. And I have a last one question. I forgot to uh, ask you about it. What, the, what about the languages? Benny Hello. is French yes, speaking and- Yeah, Malawi. So, so in Africa, you have uh, mainly three European languages, uh, French, and uh, English and Portuguese. Uh, in Angola and Mozambique, it's Portuguese. And, uh, and then with French and English, you can manage in all the different countries. So yes, of course, that's an important point. And uh, I'm actually in, in a former English colony. So people are speaking English, which is quite convenient. And in the refugee camp, all the people are speaking French because they are coming from was part of Africa where we, you, the people are speaking French. So for me, it's really easy, but uh, it's not like that uh, everywhere. And especially if you want to go in South America, you, you, need, you need to go uh, in Brazil. Well, you need to speak a little bit of Portuguese, I think. You, people everywhere now can speak English, but depends of the level of education, of course. So when you deal with some people from the streets. Well, no one is able to speak English. So you have to know their language a little bit, at least a little bit, like Spanish, like Portuguese or whatever. And if you go to do some things in Asia, Asia is quite pe peculiar because people are not speaking a lot of English. Even in Japan, I was quite surprised. <laughs> 
and uh, I, but uh, you know I w I've been in 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 uh, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, and uh, finally you you always find someone who is able to speak English, but it's not a lot. It's not a lot. They are speaking their own language mostly. So yeah, you need to have contacts before going there. You need to to have a contacts with NGO, especially with NGO, so you can mix their actions with yours. And that's the best way to start a mission. Great, thank you. Uh, so there are words of uh, support and uh, gratitude. Natasha says, congratulations, it's wonderful. Uh, Yumi yeah. says, uh, this is an amazing story. It is so mo very moving. Thank you for sharing this, Ivan. Uh, Veronique says, thank you for sharing and inspiring us too. Thank you. Thank you to everybody to, to take your time to listen to my story and my, my, my mission. But, uh, you know, I'm not just doing this. I'm writing articles about Shiatsu. I'm giving Shiatsu training in, in France, in Belgium, and uh, maybe next year in, uh, in Europe. And uh, there is someone who's do uh, just a comment on the side saying, impressive you managed to get going on this project in times of COVID too. Well, in, in, in that part of Africa, there were very little COVID situation. Maybe the third wave will be stronger, but for now it was quite cool in fact. So that's why I'm doing this too. And, uh, but I've moved a lot from Africa to Europe, Europe to Africa. And yes, you can, you can travel still, you can still travel. You just need to have your, your test with your PCR test, but it's, uh, it's okay. So thank you very much, Eva, for asking me all these questions and to the people who came today. Thank you, Kumiko, for inviting me. Thank you, Ivan. This is wonderful, wonderful project. I'm so proud of you and your mission. And I'm so pleased Shiatsu can help in the so many layers, in so many, um, from the so many different angles to help people to feel the peace, happiness, and health. And thank you to everybody for joining and learning from Ivan. Let's meditate what you can do, what you can do to help others that bring such a joy and happiness to you. And I remember Ivan said, once you put your hands to the woman, the mother, because she had such a huge headache. And after you release the hands, she felt such a release from the pain and they gave us such a joy and happiness to her and to her family and made you cry. That's so beautiful. <laughs> I hope everybody can have that kind of experience. I do have experience every day from my clients and I hope you can have that such a deep joy in your life. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you for music from Malawi. Happy. You ready? Beautiful smile from the kids. Okay. <laughs> Here Play we go. Play music. Play. Yes. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Because I'm
a great dry pot weekend. Be happy, healthy, strong, everybody. Thank you. Good luck with the project. Happy 4th of July, everybody. Happy Independence Day. Happy Independence Day. And us, we hope to have a beautiful center in Africa. Yes. Thank Bye -bye. you, everybody. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Ivan. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.